Well, this morning we are doing Job's first test. (laughs) That was was David's first test. (laughs) The, The red chairs. So in the new in the new system, <laughs> new system in the new uh, quarter, the fall quarter, we are going to be studying Job for a, for a few first six lessons, and yep, I don't know, did I get the wrong one? September first, two thousand nineteen. You picked up the wrong book, Nancy. You know, yeah, yeah, it's 2019-2020. Oh, that was last year at this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, today we're doing Job. (laughs) Abraham, he was last year. He's old, that's old news. Well, actually, what? That's what I was going to say. Job's older older than Abraham. So we have Job's first test. And um, uh, the life of Job, you know, uh, sometimes when people, preachers, you know, they get together and they talk, well, I've been reading the book of Job. It's like, okay, he's having problems. (laughs) You know, it's one of those things. Where do you go when there's lots of disaster? Go to Job. (laughs) Yeah, patience. You need trials. Well, Job... Job is your Job is your man. All right. So um, some of the things about Job, um, it stated that he had a life of integrity, a quality of being honest and having a strong moral principle. He was morally upright. So and Job, um, the author of the book of Job is is thought to be Moses. So you don't really know who the you know Job didn't write the book. Uh, Moses wrote the book. Now. When Moses received the Ten Commandments, it was around 1445, according to the Bible, that uh, have them looking up the dates. And uh, Job is supposedly in the 15th century, so this is another 60, 100 years prior to this. So uh, I don't know if um, Abraham, as a child, had firsthand experience of, of Job or whether it was a, a, a first-person uh, description of this guy, Job, but... Um, um, Moses is the guy who, who wrote about Job. Um, so we know that life often presents <clears throat> circumstances that cause us uh, deep pain, whether it's physical loss, spiritual loss, you know, uh, different things come along that um, can be uh, very confusing and very hard to, to deal with. So the book of Job relates one of the most renowned stories of personal tragedy and subsequent despair uh, that Job encounters. So we, we, have, uh, we have Job, and one of the things about, about the whole book is, uh, and about Job is that he does not blame God. He doesn't get angry at God. He, he, doesn't, he gets confused because this is not about, this is, you know, there's, there's no... There's no one else that Job could have read or gone to to have some input back and forth on what God might be like and how God, you know, works and, you know, God's love and grace and mercy and all that. There's no one else but Job. And so Job is left with his, his understanding of God and how the God had revealed himself to him. Now, we have the scripture that helps us understand God to allow God to reveal himself through his word. And then we have life situations that we're trying to put together with the word and with our life. And, you know, people uh, blame God and why, per- why that person get away with this and why is that person get away? You know, Job didn't have that type of mentality. His, his idea was God is the one who is blessed. And we'll see that here in the, later on in the book. I didn't know this. Job means hated or oppressed. Job means hated or oppressed. So perhaps in the analogy or the the interpretation of this would be 
that perhaps Job and his parents were going through Job, his parents were going through severe trials or extreme difficulties, and so they named their, their child Job, hated or oppressed. <laughs> Maybe he's the unwanted child, I don't know. But somewhere along the line, Job, at the beginning, he gets his, book, he gets his name, and it, it is reflective of being hated or oppressed. So, <clears throat> so if we take that into consideration, Job began with nothing. He didn't inherit this wealth. He, you know, he, he was considered to be hated or oppressed. That's what his parents considered him. And um, so we, we find then that he basically begins with nothing, and he, he builds this empire. So um, it's evident that Job's life was blessed greatly. He was obviously very wealthy. He was very successful at uh, everything that he attempted. And so at the beginning of the book, Everything is great. I mean, we're just recounting all of the wealth that he has. And that's one of those pictures we come up with, you know. We look at people and look at their success and say, wow, they had it easy, you know. But we don't know the story. You know, everybody has a story and nothing in life is easy. We have to overcome difficulties. So, um, so Job is one of those books. We find that, um, as we said, it's about 1445, Moses received the Ten Commandments, and about 1500, in the 1500s, 15th century, um, uh, Job, this took place. So a story unfolds, and the, the story of Job is one that's still captivating. You know, we, we wonder, we haven't, we haven't got a movie on it yet, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure maybe they'll put, come out with a, the story of Job, but who's going to go want to see Tragedy after tragedy after tragedy, you know. <laughs> well, that's, that's mostly what the movies are today, anyhow. <laughs> Destruction, <laughs> gloom, despair, and agony on me. So, so it's not unusual for a person who experiences tragedy to become bitter or withdrawn, or at least for a season. Some individuals who experience tragedy even may seem like a different person after the tragedy occurs. Um, we also know about, you know, PTSD and, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, people coming back from Iraq and, you know, the wars and things and all of those um, stressors, stressors that uh, can have an effect upon, you know, who we are as a person and our outlook on life. But the book of Job offers us some help in recognizing that God can help us in those difficult places and that God can be with us and, you know, um, we can always ask, you know, why me? And Job and his, his uh, friends, and we'll find this out as we go through the book here, his friends were very, uh, very apt at telling him why it was his fault. <laughs> He's been, he hasn't been living up to the integrity. He hasn't been li doing the job he's professed to be. So he is not a very good person as everybody thought he was because if he were good, bad things wouldn't happen. I'm not going to say amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, experience has already told us, well, that ain't true. So, um, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Oz, <clears throat> not Oz, Oz. <laughs> His name was Job. And as we said, Job means hated or um, oppressed. And... Um, that man was perfect and upright. So when we look at perfect and upright, we mean it indicates Job's motives were pure and his heart was aligned with God's will. Remember going back last week, we did the uh, Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pure in heart means that right motives, that we have right intentions. Doesn't mean that everything goes right, it means that our intentions and our motives are pure in the whole process. So when we're looking at Job, he was perfect. It, didn't, it doesn't mean without flaw. It means that he was, um, in his demeanor, in his character, he, he sought for the, what was just. He was the, the peacemaker. He was pure in his thoughts. Um, and he was, he was an upright meaning he relates to his behavior and reflects that he lived a life in accordance with God's teachings 
and righteousness. So where does he come up with God's teachings and righteousness? Well, he lived them before they were written. So that's the, the unique and the great thing about the scriptures. You know, we don't find Job in the 15th century B.C. breaking the teachings of Jesus Christ. We see Job in the 15th century B.C. living the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus talks about. So before the sermon was written, there is Job who has this, re, has this friendship with God that he's able to uh, uh, adopt or accept the character of God into his life so that it would ho- help him in making his decisions and in, 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 in his doings. So he was upright and one that feared God. He, he reverenced God. He was in awe of God. And eschew, eschewed. Um, deliberately avoids evil. <laughs> I'd look up eschewed. <laughs> I, I couldn't read my definition there. Deliberately avoided evil. So he, he um, so this is the character of Job. We're getting, we're getting an idea of, we don't, nothing's written of his early childhood. We just, ha- we just have him arriving on the scene. We have his name, hated. What's the other one? Hated uh, and oppressed. So we, we have his name, hated and oppressed. So it seems that he came from nothing. He sought after God. He was perfect in the sense that he was pure in his thoughts and honored God. He deliberately avoided evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So he has ten kids. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. So this guy's, in, in those days, you, 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 you um, didn't have bank accounts. You had herds and flocks and servants and land. So he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen. I mean, he can plow a lot of fields. <laughs> he can haul a lot of carts. I mean, he, he was, uh, you know, and uh, 3,000 camels. Well, they just didn't have camels for nothing. They had camels were, were um, the tractor trailers <laughs> of today. You know, they were the, you put them in caravans and trade, you know, he was wealthy in, in, in trade goods he, and, uh, and, uh, and the oxen for the, the fields and stuff. Um, he had 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses or she you know donkey so he had 500 so that meant that he could have 500 more you know they could be bred and have colts and you know so he could have his wealth was just phenomenal he could sell how much selling them he had a very great household meaning servants numbers of servants and people under his employment he yeah, don't think he was a slave owner so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So in that entire region, and that probably was most of the then known world, um, he was the wealthiest. Nobody could compare him or com, um, co- come near to him in his wealth and in his uh, demeanor. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone, every, everyone his day. Well, it is thought that they, they, whenever they celebrated their birthdays, I found this in two commentaries, and plus this one, um, and they celebrated their birthdays. And when they had their birthdays, they had, their, they had all their brothers, their siblings, brothers and sisters come. So they celebrated, you know, and their brothers and sisters would come and have a celebration. And sent and called their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings. Now, what Job did here was um, basically the behavior of a godly parent. Um, Job interceded for spiritual well-being. So he, he, he took no... Um, he didn't take anything for granted. Perchance they have sinned. And it goes on to say, maybe they curse God. Well, you know, that was kind of a, a, a euphemism for breaking God's, breaking, somehow broke God's law. Now, Job, in the purity of his heart, he would have, you know, he would not have done th- certain things. 
you know, other people may have done them. And it may not have been sinful, but Job was so pure in his thoughts, he was not going to do that. Right, there were no commandments. There was, there was nothing written. There was no Moses, there was no Mount Sinai, there was no Abraham. <laughs> there, was, there was none of that. There was just Job. And it's almost like Enoch. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. So it's, it's, it's like perhaps Job um, heard of or knew of uh, Enoch. Or, you know, we don't, there's nothing like that stated in the scriptures. But, you know, perhaps it was some of those types of things that inspired Job. But he, he interceded for the well-being of his children. He recognized his responsibility to pray for his children and to seek God on their behalf. That's one of the things. So whenever he had these um, sacrifices and, and burnt offerings, it was like an atonement offering um, to atone for their sins. Or, you know, it was like the sacrificial system being instituted, but there was no sacrificial system. <laughs> and, and, but Job did that. Uh, for Job said, it may, have, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So he continually prayed for his kids. Um, and he prayed for each of them, all of his children equally. And uh, he practiced, Job demonstrated his, his consistency. Thus did Job continually. So we find him interceding for, on behalf of his children continually, not just after they go out and have a party. Well, now there was a day. <laughs> there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came and also among them. Now, this is, this is one of those um, uh, situations where, what was Satan doing in the presence of God? Well, Satan appears in the midst of them. So, it means that he was there in the midst of the other angels, and he was there... Uh, among them, indicates Satan did not have a special status before God. He did not come in for a private meeting. Who? Satan? No. No, he had, he had permission to come. Okay? And we notice that throughout this, this uh, discourse here, God gives Satan, Satan God, you know, sometimes we read this and say, well, why did God bring up Job's name in the first place? <laughs> yeah. Well, what, is, what it's indicating is God knew what Satan was up to. He knew, whom he, he knew what he had found. And Satan can't begin the conversation without permission. <laughs> Satan can't start the conversation without permission. So God gives him permission to speak about what it is he wants to bring, wants to, to, to bring out. So in this, in this situation, God is not, you know, Satan, he's not there in charge and just him hawing around. God knows why he's there. God knows what he's up to. And God gave him permission to speak because he gave him the information first, right? Now, we would think, well, why didn't he just, well, we'll, we'll, we'll learn more as we go on. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Okay, God asked Satan, okay, where have you been? See, he can't tell, he can't, hey God, I've been down there walking around the earth. God says, Satan, where have you been? What are you doing here? Okay, he, God asked the question. God is in charge. Satan answered, said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down it. Okay, so what is the, what is the mission of of Satan is to separate God's people. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's five minutes. Sep his mission is to separate God's people from God. So he, his mission is to, um, you know, he's going through the earth and he's trying to find it. And the Lord said unto Satan, okay, you found somebody, but he, he said, what, he said uh, hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in all the earth. A perfect, perfect meaning he has a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Pure means they, they have pure motives. They have, they have motives in their heart that are, that are consistent with God. And, and he is an upright man. He does things rightly before, before others. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. What does he do? He deliberately avoids anything that's evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and says, Doth 
God, Job, fear God, be not one. Let me read that again. <laughs> then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? He has a reason because he, he, he fe- Hast thou not made a hedge about him? This is, you know, whenever we say we pray that God would build a hedge about our, our loved ones and our families and about our lives and about our jobs and about everything we do, this is where it comes from. And who brought this up? Satan says he can't get in. Satan himself cannot get into or around. He can't, he can't do anything about, around Job because he can't get in. There's a hedge about him. Hello. That's us. We got a hedge. Not a hedgehog. We have a hedge. <laughs> it's about us. And Satan can't get in unless he has permission. If he has permission, there has, then he has a purpose. God has a purpose for the difficulty. All right. Uh, Thou hast blessed him with the work of his hands and his substance increase. Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. If you take away everything he owns, he'll, he'll curse you. Because <laughs> what's, what's Satan's purpose? To bring people away from, come on in, bring people away from uh, God. You know, so Satan, that's his purpose. Get people away from God. So, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan, God says to Satan, Go ahead, you can take away everything he has. So, in one day, um, his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their old eldest brother's house, having, this, having the birthday party. Um, and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. You know, so everybody, there was everything that he owned was gone, including all of his children. One day, everything was gone, left with nothing. Job arose, verse 20, arose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshiped. You see, you can't go to God and worship at a crisis like this unless you've been to God and worship when everything's going good. So he worshiped God. Everything is gone. And he bowed down. He said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord gave. The Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not and charged, and not, nor charged God foolishly. Yeah. You don't charge God foolishly. You know, when when we get angry at God, <laughs> not not me, you know, but when you get angry at God, <laughs> just kidding. But when we get angry, you know, get angry, we are not to be angry at God, but understand God has a purpose. And we not we may not understand God's purpose, but he has a purpose. So we are called to be like, jo- like Job, pray for our families, pray for, you know, thank God for the blessings we have and that we believe that God would put a hedge about us, to protect us, protect our children, and we consecrate them to God, give them to God, and we pray God's blessing to be upon them and that any, any influence that is evil or wrong will be broken. The blood of Christ that covers us will wash us and protect us and surround us and all those things. Yeah, Ecclesiastes, that, that there's a time and a purpose, and we don't understand, time and chance happen to all men. It's like, time and chance is like, you know, chances are, but God has a plan in the purpose, and nothing is, nothing is um, by chance. It's by divine appointment. So, 
We never are to charge God foolishly and consecrate our life and, and have purity of thoughts and intentions in our mind. So we're going to go on next week to Job, second test. Job's an interesting book. And next week, next week, it's finally here. I've been saying this for a month and making it wrong. Next week, <laughs> 9... 45 and 1045, right? Got that right. 945 for Sunday school, 1045 for church. I knew it would come. <laughs> it's not here yet. It's next week. All right. God, we thank you for the blessings of the day. We thank you for the, your word, O oh God, that gives us light to our path. And Lord, we thank you that for the life of Job, and I'm sure in, in his time and in his in all this sorrow and misunderstanding and he had so many questions but lord he was faithful to you and god you honored his faithfulness and so lord we pray that you will help us to be faithful in all that we do honor you O oh god and have purity of thoughts and not and not curse you or be angry with you in any situation we pray in jesus name amen